Well, <laughs> uh, that video tells it all. I think it's HSN Inc. has just had so much growth. Um, and I think when you consider that the retail industry itself now contributes about $2.5 trillion to GDP, according to the National Retail Federation, it's easy to see why we are having this discussion with you today. Um, so now we did want to get into a big part of the growth and why that is so because of your leadership. Uh, so Mindy, how does one get to be the CEO of HSNP? Well, I think the path today, and it was interesting listening to the different generations, um, I think the path to anything today is not linear, right? It's about how do you use every experience you have to be additive um, and broaden your capabilities, and that was certainly kind of the case uh, for me um, throughout my career, and I was trying to figure out what generation I actually fit into. I'm definitely the ones that went this way, even though I'm supposedly a boomer. Um, but I, I, I do think it's really important that, um, you know, as you grow in your career, the key is to have this intellectual curiosity to broaden yourself this way to become more valuable as you move up and be very strategic about that. And just to give you an idea, when I joined um, HSN in 2006, it was a very, very unusual segue. I've been at Nike for six years running their global apparel business. And if you can imagine, when it was announced that I was leaving Nike to go to the television shopping network, people thought I had a midlife crisis. Um, but what I was really excited about was because of what was happening in the environment. Um, you know, owning a direct-to-consumer business in an area where you really wanted to create emotional connection with the consumers was going to be important. Technology was changing dramatically. People's way of interfacing with brands and media and their way of consuming was changing dramatically. So to jump into a business that still was of scale, but needed to be reinvigorated, but that owned this incredible content platform across television, print, media, et cetera, with a huge direct-to-consumer population was incredibly exciting. And to be able to kind of reinvent a legacy that was still fantastic was thrilling. Um, now, Judy, certainly as CFO, you have a very good background in, in different parts, but I did want to hone in today on the news um, of your promotion and title of Change, CFO and COO now. As of this morning. <laughs> so, if, Mindy, if you could tell us a little bit of what your thinking was. In yeah, well, I think I'm going to go back a little bit to um, Know, when we when we first met and I think one of the things in today's world you need to find uh, people that you want to be with who have both contrasting and complementary skills and you really can have incredible uh, trust and respect for and you know when I was thinking of going to the company I said to them well I don't want to join the company until I've met the CFO you know I want to get an idea of what's happening so uh, we met I was in Florida for a, a Nike tennis tournament or something, and Judy came in, and he hit it off immediately. And I clearly recognized that I could not be successful in this role without a great partner. And seven years later, that hasn't changed. And um, throughout the time we went public, which was crazy because it's August 2008, up until today, um, you know, we've done everything in partnership and in this recent, um, let's call it, reorganization of the company to set ourselves up for the future, unquestionably, you know, it was clear that we had to create these incredible operational centers of excellence in addition to, you know, a world-class financial organization and Judy had the leadership and um, respect to be able to do that. So it certainly has been received incredibly well by the company, but this whole evolution of where, how we work together and what our roles are, I think makes us both stronger, which in essence makes the company strong. 
Now you mentioned skills, and so I guess to take that to another level, what skills are necessary to be in the C-suite? Would you say in today's world, ever-changing world? You know, I, th I think there's a, there's, a, there's a number of things that, uh, not just to be in the C-suite to a degree, but to move into different levels of leadership. Uh, I think the ability, no matter what your role, whether you're a CFO, CEO, CMO, you've got to be able to inspire people of a vision of where you're moving the company. You've got to have great communication skills. Um, you heard earlier, you've got to have great collaborative capabilities and build diverse teams. And you have to be executionally focused. Um, I think all of those things are critical. Absolutely. I think that you know, part of it is to really have that leadership and be able to inspire in your teams to see the vision and to make sure that that vision is communicated not only internally but externally as well. Right. And how do you think that's changed at all, how important communication is to your staff or to the board? Has it become so much more important, I think, in today's world? What's your opinion? Well, I think there's so much data today, right? And there's so many different ways to communicate um, so communication is absolutely critical. And I think it's also very important to be transparent in what your vision is, what are your strategies, and what are your tactics to be able to implement that. 